So yeah, uh, we are getting started, uh, but I wanted to I want to remind you that we're going to be able to break into groups. I get putting this up into context. We've talked about co-planning, and if you guys remember, we talked about the what, how, who approach. Is that sounding familiar at all? Remember the what, the how, the who? So I just wanted to give an example before we break up, since some of you are going to want to work with colleagues or small groups. Here's an example of what this would look like, pulling the differentiation in with what we've talked about before about planning and um, co-teaching, of course. So if I was meeting with a science teacher, so I'm meeting with Marty and I'd say, or, or Mel, let's say Mel, our gen ed science teacher. Mel, what, what do we have to do in science? And he says, all right, well first I know that we have to do homework review. We haven't done a homework review. Uh, also, we have to read a chapter in text. We have to make sure that we answer some questions. I want to do a short lecture. I've got content. It's going to be about 10 minutes. I want them to take notes on it. I know that uh, there, we've also got a short, like, hands-on activity kind of lab that we have to do. And then, of course, we have to do writing across the curriculum. There has to be some kind of writing, maybe, I don't know, a journal comprehension check. So even though this doesn't have the content, because I don't want to, I'm not focusing on the content, he's letting me know this kind of thing has to happen in this class with whatever co the content is. So I know that. And as I'm collaborating with him and co-teaching, then if you look on the left, the what is there. The homework check, the review, the reading chapter, the mini lecture, the hands-on activity, the writing comprehension. Now we get to the how. How are we going to do it? This is where you guys are pulling in your co-teaching approaches and figuring out what makes the most sense. So maybe Mel and I talk about it and we say, well, you know, when we do the homework check, one of us can be taking role, one of us can be walking around stamping kids' papers. When we do the review, what if the two of us use team teaching for a few minutes and just role play our, our answers or talk about the answers? Good, done. That's the first 10 minutes of class. Now let's get creative. And so that reading chapter, that's going to take 20 minutes for them to actually read it, answer some questions. So um, Mel says, you know what, I'll, do you wanna, Mel, do you want to do the reading chapter or do you want to do the lab? I'll let you pick. You want to do the lab, jerk? All right. No, fine. You get to do the fun stuff. So that's fine because actually I know that as a special educator, I deal a lot with kids who struggle with reading, so that's actually probably better. So I'm going to have half of the group, we're doing parallel, I'll keep half of the group for 20 minutes and get to work with them in their text, answering questions and making sure they get it. At the same time, half of the kids are going to go over to Mel, but now we're getting even more creative because in that 20 minutes that he has, He's breaking them into two different groups. So even within that, he's breaking them in. And one group, he's going to be working on doing a direct instruction mini lecture. And one group's going to be working on that lab that he's already set up directions for. And then they flip flop. So in that 20 minutes, they're listening to him, they're moving. Or they're moving, and then they're listening to him. And then the both groups flip flop. So we're being really creative there. Then we get into um, the end of the lesson because everybody's gone through all of this and we have alternative which is large group, small group. And so we've identified, Mel and I just do it in a quick check-in, like who wasn't getting it in your group? Who wasn't getting it in mine? Hey, I'll take those couple kids who need a little reteach or we've got a couple kids who are ready for enrichment, let's pull them back there, Mel's ready for that. So that's the how, did it super quickly. Now get to the who. This is where you get your differentiation. This, by the way, the how, is your UDL. This is where we're thinking, how are we engaging them? How are we making sure that we're doing different things for different kids? Bigger picture. But in addition, now we get to the who. So now we're adding in different things. Well, during that homework check, we could be doing cell phones, letting them use them as clickers, using poll everywhere, or doing something like Kahoot. We have scaffolded questions. We even have some different homework. Kids did different things for the homework. For the reading chapter, I could be using auto-summarize on Word. I could be letting some students using, use text-to-speech apps. Some kids had headphones during that time because they're listening to it. Some students have a chapter that's already got highlighting in it. Concurrently, Mel's over there and he's lecturing. He's using something called the LiveScribe pen. Do any of you guys use that, the Echo pen? Oh, excellent. And do you, what do you use it for? As you lecture, you, sorry. Um, um, Perfect. And you've already uploaded it. Yeah, and that's fantastic. So kids who uh, are absent, 
So the pen, as, as you can talk, or she said that it, sometimes the students will take the notes, but the pen is recording as you take the notes, which is great if you have a student who needs to have repetition to aid retention. They can actually listen to the lecture again the night, before, uh, night after an educational therapist or a parent who's trying to help them, a tutor, can hear it as you explained it. So anyway, Mel's back there, he's giving lecture, but he's using the LiveScribe Echo Pen. Um, or we, he's also got a graphic organizer using closed procedure. All this is possible.